Hi, my name is Mike Frades. I'm a product manager at Waves. Today I'm going to talk to you about a new line we're working on uh, called Cobalt. And the first plugin is going to be Safira. I'd recommend to start using it on master buses, groups, mix buses, uh, mastering situations where you want to add some of this extra spice that everybody is looking in mastering. A little bit of life, that's the places where I think Sephira uh, has its fortes. Try to get the final sound as close as possible to what you want using EQs, compression, bringing the RMS levels up, which will help in bringing out the harmonic distortion. And after you have the sound just the way you want it, using the regular processing you're used to use, try to open up Sephira, and I'm pretty sure it will add the magic that you're looking to polish and finish the sound that you had envisioned. Sephira is gonna be very helpful in a lot of music genres, whether it is a rock song, or uh, electronic music where you're working with a lot of samples and you want to bring the samples back to life, add the motion, uh, place them in certain layers in, the, in your mix. Because from my experience, samples tend to be a bit dull. A lot of the times I find myself looking for ways, getting this analog feel to them. And Safira is going to shine in that place. If it's a sampled kick, which is completely maximized and processed, uh, and you want to bring some of the dynamics and some of the livelihood back to the sample, you can use Sephira to do that. Uh, sampled pianos. The actual fact that you're in most library sampling each note by itself, with the Sephira, you can glue a chord to give it more of a feeling that was produced from hitting all those notes together. Let's talk for a second about the different controls in Sephira that help you achieve the kind of harmonic distortion sound you're looking for. The basics of Sephira is the option to separately control odd and even harmonics. Each part of the section uh, that we call edge for even and warmth for odd, have two faders, send and return. The way I think about it is an input to a compressor and an output from a compressor. The input to a compressor will drastically change the sound in a non-linear matter. Once you have a certain compression sound, the output will just bring that sound up and down in a linear way so you can adjust the volume you want of, in this case, your harmonic distortions. The way I used to work with the send control is I bring it up to a place where it sounds like the signal is starting to compress and resist me. It stops becoming richer, it just becomes duller. That's the point where I start backing up until the signal comes back to life. With Safira, you really need to uh, use your ears to exactly find those points. Once I have the send in the right place, I'll just use the return to adjust the level of the harmonics. I'll do uh, this process for both odd and even, or edge and warmth harmonics. Once I have the send levels in the right place, I'll go and I'll take a tour between the different harmonic modes. Below the harmonic modes, you'll see the different harmonic structure that each of the modes is producing. You'll have mode C, which is just one odd harmonic, one even harmonic. You'll have mode A, where you have uh, three even harmonic, two odd harmonics. Uh, you'll have mode F, where you have a lot of uh, harmonic orders just to give you this uh, crunchy, crispy sound going on. It depends what you're looking for, but just toggle between those seven modes and see what best fits uh, for your signal. Just in general, A, B, and D are more natural sounding harmonics. C is where you want to keep the punch. Why? Because it adds just one harmonics. It doesn't add all the other 
harmonic order, so it keeps the signal clean and punchy, but adds some richness to it. And G and F is where it gets dirty. Once I've decided my harmonic modes, I will go and I'll listen to what's going on when I turn off the edge harmonics or I turn off the warmth harmonics. When you turn them on and off, you hear how it impacts the sound. A very important tip is always work in context because like with EQs, when you solo it out, one thing can sound great, but then you put it in the mix and it's completely lost. Look for the places where uh, it gets muddy, where it's, it doesn't shine enough, and now go to the EQ and add or remove those uh, areas of frequencies until you get a very clean and rich harmonic sound. Then I tend to go to the tape section. The tape section is there to give you movement in your mix, adding movement to instruments. Tapes tend to modulate, and this type of modulation is the type of modulation we added in Sephira. We have five different speeds. Two of them are speeds that don't really exist. 11 and a quarter inches per second, which is exactly halfway between 15 and seven and a half, and 22 and a half, which is exactly the halfway between 30 and 15 IPS. I'll bring the tape speed all the way up and until I really hear the modulation. Then I'll go between the different speeds. Usually if you have a low frequency content, from my experience, the low speed will be more complementary. If you have something with a lot of groove and the groove is fast, you might want to go towards the faster inch per second speeds, 22 and a half, 30 IPS, just to make sure that the modulation is not slow enough to slow the groove. Toggle between them, pretty sure you'll find one that sounds the most musical. Now start bringing the tape depth down until you reach the point where you don't really hear the modulation, but you feel the track is moving. Okay, that's the place where you want to stop. And suddenly, when you turn it off, the track, track becomes dull and static. So all of these uh, parts of the plugin help us get more depth, motion, and character to our sound.